Hi everyone! Today we're going to learn on how to compute the mean of a group data. First, we need the frequency distribution. As you can see in our given example, that there are 30 students who took the final quiz in mathematics in the modern world as shown in this table. Second is how to solve the mean of a group data, which is denoted as capital M and small n. Of course, we need the formula. And the formula is mn equals x sub 0 plus the summation of the product of the frequency and the deviation times the class size over the total number of population. So right now, we're going to list down all the different terms or symbols being used in this given formula. So again, mn is the mean of a group data. x sub 0 is the assumed mean. F is the frequency, X sub D is the deviation from the assumed mean, and um, N is the total frequency, and lastly, the letter I is the class size. So these are the different terms that we're going to apply in order to solve the mean of a group data. So let us now try to combine the formula for the mean and the frequency distribution as the next slide. Okay, so right now we have the frequency distribution and the formula. So here we need to put another column in this frequency distribution in order for us to solve the class mark, which is symbolized as X sub M. But the question is, what do you think is the importance of getting the X sub M or the class midpoint or class uh, class mark in this problem? Of course, this would be the basis of the value of the assumed mean. So how can we solve the class mark? Of course, simple as you're just getting the average of the lower limit and the upper limit on each class limit or class interval. So what do I mean? If we're going to add 10 and 15, that is 25, and half of it is the class mark or class midpoint, and that is 12.5. The same process on the second row, 16 plus 21 is 37, half of it is what we call 18.5. Now try to observe the first two class mark that 12.5 is the sum if we're going to add 10 by 2.5 as well as the 16. Therefore, you just simply add all the remaining table for the class mark or class midpoint by adding it 2.5. So 22 plus 2.5 is 24.5. 28 is equals to 30.5. 34 equals to 36.5 and if we are going to add 40 by 2.5 then we have the 42.5 this is how we get the class mark or class midpoint of the given frequency distribution now let us have another column and that is x sub d when we say x sub d that is the deviation of the assumed mean the problem now is where we're going to put or label or the would be the basis for the assumed mean. So since we have the class mark or class midpoint, any class mark or any mid class um, midpoint would be the basis of our assumed mean. So let us try to use the third row for our assumed mean. So if we're going to use the third row, then the division will have a value of zero here. So that's it. Because you say that the third row will be the basis for your assumed mean. So therefore, the x sub zero would be the class mark on the third row, and that is 24.5. Now, if we have the division, all the numbers or class limit or class interval less than from 20 to 27 will take the negative number. 
And so those number or class limit or class interval which is exceeds the 22 to 27 class limit or class interval will take the positive. So here we're going to have negative 1, here negative 2 because they are less than 22 to 27. Here we'll take positive 1, 2, 3 because they exceeds the class uh, limit or class interval 22 to 27. So right now we are very close to our formula. So here we're just going to get the product of the frequency times the deviation. F times the deviation. X sub D. So we're going to put another column here. F times x d. So 8 times negative 2, 6 times negative 1, 5 times 0, 7 times 1, 2 times 2, 2 times 3 will be our process. So since we started with the row for the assumed mean, so let's start it also here. So 5 times 0 is 0, 6 times negative 1 is negative 6, 8 times negative 2 is negative 16, 7 times 1 is 7, 2 times 2 is 4, 2 times 3 is 6. Right now, we're going to get the sum of the product of the frequency and the deviation. So, negative 16 plus negative 6 is negative 22, Z plus 0 is negative 22, plus 7 is negative 15, plus 4 is negative 11, plus 6 is negative 5. That's why the summation of the product of the frequency and the deviation is negative 5. So, we're done with this. We are already through with the assumed mean. And how we're going to get the capital N? Simply, just add all the frequency. So, 8 plus 6 plus 5 plus 7 plus 2 plus 2 equals 30 will be our total number of populations. So, how are we going to get the class size or small letter i? And simply, we're going to subtract the upper limit to the lower limit in any row or any class limit or class interval of these scores in math. Like for example, if we're going to subtract 33 to 28, that is 5, then add 1, which is 6. The same as 45 minus 40, which is 5, add plus 1, that is 6. Therefore, the class size is 6. Okay, let us now uh, solve the mean of the group data. So let us bring down the formula here. So when we say x sub 0 is the assumed mean, so we state that on the third row will be the basis of the assumed mean. It so happened that the class mark or class midpoint is 24.5. Therefore, x sub 0 is 24.5. Then, the summation of the product of the frequency and the deviation, which is negative 5, will be the answer in this bracket. Then the total number of population of the frequency is 30. So bring down 30 here. And again, the class size is simply the difference of 45 to 40, which is 5 plus 1 is 6. Then we know that if we're going to simplify it, negative 5 times 6 is negative 30. Divide 30 is negative 1. That's why we have 24.5 plus negative 1 and the uh, sum is 23.5 this is how we solve the mean of a group data okay so let us go back to the frequency distribution we can only solve the mean of a group data for having the five columns so remember that we have the two columns which are already given and we are only adding three more columns such as the class lim uh, class midpoint or class mark the deviation and the product of the frequency and the deviation okay this is how you picture out the mean of a group data so if you like this video Please don't forget to subscribe and click the bell button for more notification. Thank you and God bless everyone.